Hi, this is Bridget McManus. I'm one of the producers and writer and star of Maybell, a new lesbian web series that is out this Sunday, December 13th on telefilms.com. And I'm sitting down and asking questions to one of the stars of the series Maybell, my own lovely wife, Carmen Craiglow. Carmen Craiglow! Woo-hoo! You uh, star in the series. Can you talk about your character, who you play, and mm-hmm. what she is all about? <laughs> It's a, it's a role of a lifetime. It's a role I was born to play. I get to play a dirtbag named Mick. And Mick's a bar owner in this uh, crummy little town where they live. And Mick thinks very highly of herself. Oh. She is a, uh, a self-declared womanizer. And, uh, and uh, she feels good about it. She feels good about it. Let's just say Maybelle's not the first to make a visit to the back of Mick's truck. Nice. Um, is there anything, any similarities between you and Mick? <laughs> I mean, great hair, high self-esteem. <laughs> what, what, anything you didn't like about playing her? Um, let's just say, I'm glad that, that I'm not living mixed life. Okay. I think, uh, I think married life is a better fit for me. Good answer. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> How did you prepare for your role as Mick? Well, um, I, uh, I studied... The work of other great dirtbags in entertainment. Did history. you really? Yes. yes. Every Burt Reynolds character. Every Burt Reynolds character. Um, all four seasons of Eastbound and Down. Kenny Powers was like a major influence for me. That was true. You said that you wanted me to create a Kenny Powers role. Absolutely. So for those of you who know Kenny Powers, what is what does he embody? What is he like? Um, uh, unwarranted, reckless, abandoned. Uh, sort of a desire to do anything he wants, whenever he wants. No matter what, who cares if anybody else doesn't like it? And uh, he thinks way too highly of himself. <laughs> I love it. He's an idiot. So why did you want to do this role? Well, I get to make out with my wife. Yeah, but you actually specifically asked me to write this role for you. <laughs> People don't realize that you, you play a scumbag because you wanted to play a scumbag. Yeah, I don't know because he looks like he's having so much fun. Like when I watch Eastbound and Down, like Kenny Powers, the character is one of my favorite characters on TV. And I think Danny McBride looks like he's having a blast. And it's sort of like a way to act out all the parts of oneself that you repress. Like, you try to not be a jerk. You try to not be selfish. You try to not be the worst. And so it's kind of fun to blow it out and, you know, have that be your job. And then you then you don't have to repress it all the time. You can let it out in a way that's that's good for the world. What's hard about this interview right now is that you're smiling so big. <laughs> I don't think I've seen your eyes light up so much. Apparently, you have a lot of... We should probably go to couples counseling. Okay, next question. All right, your wife which, that's me, yeah, yeah. Uh, has to kiss her co-star, Fran Nichols, a lot in the series. No kidding. Were you jealous, or how did you feel about that? I wasn't jealous. You also weren't on set for any of it. No, I wasn't, but I have seen the rough cuts. You have seen the rough cuts. Well, talk about before. How, um, when, when I wrote it, did you think, maybe you shouldn't kiss so much? No, I mean, I understand that that's your job. People have hard jobs in life. Sometimes they have to do life-saving surgeries. All right, shut up. Sometimes you... they have to kiss people that they aren't married to. But were you were you jealous at all? No, but I think that that's because I know Fran. Yes. And I have kissed her on the cheek myself. Oh, scandal. I mean, I'm pretty sure. I don't know. Maybe we just hugged. I don't really remember. But yeah. I, I know that she's happily coupled and that you guys are both pros. And I was made to feel very comfortable with it. And also, let's keep it real. You remind me every moment of every day how much you love me and how devoted you I are do. to me. And that is, I'm very lucky. So thank yeah, you. Yeah, I wouldn't and So there's really, really no room make for out me. with anybody else. No. Just for money. I, just, good, just, thanks. just for the money. <laughs> just, just for the money. That's my, uh, that's what they call me. Bridget, just for the money, McManus. <laughs> that's what I call you. Oh, oh high five. <laughs> Not only are you an actor in this series, but you also um, are kind of like, my music supervisor, we talk about the kind of music that we're putting underneath the series. I have a mm-hmm. great sound uh, designer named Jesse, who I love. Hi, Jesse. But Hi, Jesse. you specifically wrote a song that um, is debuting on in my series called yeah. Hummingbird. Can you talk about that? I've had this song in my back pocket for a couple years, and I you know, would take it out and play around with it, and I hadn't finished it. And it was actually, and then I did finish it, and it, it was actually the first song I ever finished like it was a completed song it was fully written fully realized um but I wasn't really I didn't know what to do with it like I I think it hadn't occurred to me to think big enough to think about how I could maybe use a song in this manner and when you asked me about the song because I'd played it for you before 
I was really excited to get to um, bring it to life fully rather than just sort of sitting in my room playing it. And so I worked uh, a professional composer for film and TV named Carla Petullo who works under the name White Widow. And she um, agreed to help me bring the song to life. And we spent a couple of days in her studio and it was really exciting to get to flesh the song out and give it the bigger sound I feel like it deserved. It, it's a song I really, I'm proud of it. And I'm, I'm so grateful to Carla for making it come to life the way she did. And I'm grateful to you and Kristen Atello for selecting my song to use for the show. So it's your first solo piece, because you've been in bands before, yeah, but this is the first bands. time you are stepping out and you're singing. You're singing it, you wrote it, you're playing guitar on it. Yeah. Wow, it sounds impressive when you say it. That. I mean, it <laughs> is. It's very amazing. So so it's called Hummingbird. Yes. And uh, how would you explain the vibe of it? Um, I think the vibe is a little dreamy and uh, wistful. Um, she says dreamy while our dog Taffy snores yeah. in the background so loud. I think, I think it put Taffy to sleep. Um, it's like, uh, it's a sort of a bittersweet song. Yes. It kind of, it came out of a, a dream I had in which my grandmother visited me in a dream and, and as a white hummingbird and kissed me on the cheek and communicated with me in this dream. And the song, like, it's one of those rare songs, at least rare for me, that it kind of like came out all at once. You vomited this magic. I kind of puked this song out after the dream. And then I think that's why it took me so long to quote unquote finish it because I didn't realize it was finished. Yeah. Like I thought, oh, well, that was too easy. There's more work to be done. Yeah, because things don't usually come out quite like that. And then one day I just realized that I, there was nothing more, like I, I didn't need to do any more on my end to make that song complete, that it was actually, it was the way it was supposed to be and I needed to accept it as it was and then, then decide what to do with I it. I think a lot of artists have that problem. They think it's not done, let me just keep finessing it and then you never actually release anything because you, you want to make it perfect and sometimes it, things are just are as they are. Yeah, and they are, they are perfect in their own way. Exactly. It, but you don't really know that till later. So Carmen Craigla, what is next for you? Well, I've had so much fun working on the song Hummingbird with Carla that I asked her if she'd be willing to help me put together an EP. Sorry, I couldn't other... hear past our dog snoring. <laughs> um, you're putting it together an EP. Yes, an EP of other original songs, and so that's what's going to be next. I'm working on... Um... All songs that are originals that yeah, you've they're written? All origi- all originals, five or six songs. I, I guess if I had to classify them, they'd sort of be like roots rock, Americana, bluesy rock kind of stuff. And... Um, I'm working with my friend Eric Vasquez, who I was in a band with. He's going to be playing guitar on all of um, these songs. So you have two shows coming up. Plug, plug them for us. Okay, so on December 17th in L.A. at El Cid in Silver Lake, I'm going to be playing a show that's part of a uh, Honky Tonk Hacienda's Songwriting Circle showcase, and I'm going to be doing two or three songs there. That's uh, it's 8 o'clock at night, right? 8, eight o'clock? Yeah, it starts at 8. I think it's like $5, five, dollar five cover. bucks. Good time. So you're probably going to sh- sing like two or three songs. Probably two or three songs. It just depends on how much time we have. And then um, on January 30th, I'm going to be doing a show at uh, the Universal Bar and Grill in North Hollywood over by Universal Studios. Eric, who I mentioned earlier, is having a show on the 30th, and I'm going to do a song with him. Maybe, for those maybe you, more, I don't know. For those of you who's, who are fans of Carmen, which, of course, I am, and probably <laughs> Gail, the only two people listening to this. My mother. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Eric uh, was also featured in McManus Land Season 2 as uh, as the M to M uh, bandmate. So a little shout-out to Eric Vasquez. We love you. So I don't know how many people know this, but you actually are a performer. You've performed many different times. You've hosted your own show on the Logo Network. You had mm-hmm. a couple of uh, video blogs on AfterIsland.com. You've acted in other things. Yes, I've done some acting. <laughs> can, can I just want to say, give you a shout out to my lovely wife who actually um, ca- got cast in a LA Times commercial. Oh, it was yeah. a PSA uh, for gay marriage mm-hmm. back in 2000 and I don't even know. Back before we had marriage equality. Before we had marriage equality. Like a couple years ago. The, the funny story there is Carmen and I um, auditioned together as a married, real, they wanted real life married couples and they booked Carmen and not me. So <laughs> she, she's actually a very successful actress if you all didn't know Thank that. You. Thank so you. if you could create a role for yourself on any TV show or series, existing or non-existing, what would you, what would you want to play? What would you want to do? Oh my God. Wow. Carte blanche, huh? Mm-hmm. Well, I have to say the dirtbag thing was a lot of fun. So I feel like I'm such a nerdy, wholesome type that getting to play bad people and villains and Like jerks, villains like in Fargo or villains like a comedy? I don't know. Maybe both. I think like um, 
comedy villains are great. You know, like I love a comedy villain because you kind of get the best of both worlds with that. But um, maybe a dramatic villain would be an interesting Ooh. thing. I don't, I don't know. I don't feel like I've really done a lot of dramatic acting. I've just done a lot of comedy stuff. So I don't really know how that would be for me. If Who would you be your fit. ultimate on-screen partner? Don't say me. I don't care about me. Pick someone real. Any actress in the world or oh, actor. Oh, my God. Actor. Actor. Any actor. Anybody. Um, well, I think for an actor, it would probably be like, uh, I don't know, maybe Ewan McGregor or Danny McBride. Carmen loves Danny. Danny McBride. I hope you're listening I to this. Carmen listening. wants to work with you. Yeah. Forget what I said about Ewan McGregor. And he's too pretty. I'll take you, Danny McBride. Well, I think you just insulted your cold star. He knows what he looks like. Okay. So wait, who okay. would you pick? Actress. Actress. Boy, this are you, is... Are you going to go Kate Blanchett, Carol? Is that where... Carol. Carol. Oh, Ooh. hi. Therese, not Teresa. Carol. Ooh, so oh, give me... Let me light a cigarette. <laughs> All right. For those of you who haven't seen Carol, go fucking see Carol. We, okay. we basically just do Carol voices around the house. I mean, I got to go old school. I got to go Jessica Lange. Jessica Lange! It's a childhood Jessica... dream. It's a childhood Jessica dream. Jessica Lange. Oh, another thing you don't know about Carmen is Carmen has a painting that she made as a child of <laughs> Jessica Lange, and it is amazing. It is amazing. It's uh, it's my rendition of the poster for her 1983 film, Frances, for which she was nominated for Best Actress. Of course, Oscar. all of us are big fans of the movie Frances from 1983. <laughs> Who doesn't love a good mental patient drama? I mean, you know. You know I haven't seen that movie. It's uplifting. Most people haven't seen this you movie. You haven't seen that movie? No, because I was three years old. I haven't seen the <laughs> mental patient Jessica Lange movie. I haven't gone back and seen that one yet. Well, guess what we're doing tonight. Oh, shit. <laughs> I have seen it. It's so good. I don't need to see it again. So you yourself have interviewed many people. And one question that I, I know you've asked people in the past, which I'm going to ask you, is if you could have any actor or an actress play you in your own life story, who would it be? It could be oh anybody. God. Oh, my God. Well, I'm going to have to go with J-Law. And this. Oh, Jenner. Oh, really? Yeah, here's I why. see the similarities. I mean, number one, the, the resemblance is uncanny. Completely uncanny. Sometimes uh, I see a picture of her in, in People Magazine. I go, is that my wife on the I cover know. of a magazine? I get confused. I catch you making out with Entertainment Weekly. It's I, weird. J- time out. J-Law is not my type. You know this. J-Law <laughs> is a flavor for you and you only. Okay. She's a good flavor. Okay, so why J-Law? Okay, She's at the top of her game. Mm-hmm. If she was in a movie about me, everyone would go see it because That's she's true. J-Law. That'd be true. Imagine the box office. That'd be so true. And then Entertainment Weekly would want to talk to me because of her. Yeah. Right? You're talking about the publicity side of it. I see it all. Yeah, I'll, always, always. And you think that she could portray you? I mean, she has a good range and she can do complexity. She can. And you're, uh, and you're very complex. I'm super complex. You just want to have some one-on-one time with Jayla. She, we might so need you to can... talk about the role. She might need to do, do some a little research. research. Might need to do a yeah, little research. Yeah, this isn't happening. This isn't happening. <laughs> Jayla. Your idea. This is the worst idea I've ever had. if you're listening, we could totally make this happen. Don't even worry about it. Jayla, if you're listening, why? So the series comes out December 13th. This is a Sunday. Mm-hmm. Can you uh, uh, tell everybody where they can watch it? You can watch this amazing series on telefilms.com. It's a fantastic uh, subscription-based service internet site that provides lesbian content by and for lesbians. You can see a lot of great entertainment there, a lot of talented people putting their best work forward at telefilms.com. And uh, you could watch some of our other work there. Bridget did a series called McManus Land. Season one and season two are available. There are some episodes of Brunch of Bridget on that, show, which Carmen there. produced. Yeah. So you've, you've been, you've, uh, you're all over Tello. Maybelle is groundbreaking entertainment. It's really, it's really great. I have to brag on you. I have to brag on my wife here for a minute. It's so well written and so well acted. It's a really great piece of entertainment. It's a really good kind of slice of life character study of, of someone who lives in um, a lesbian who lives in rural Virginia and what it's like to be a small town gay person. And I feel like it's a, a great portrayal of that. Having been in that world myself for many years, I think it rings true. It's it's really good. It's it's um it's very romantic. Aw. Yeah. Thank you to my wonderful wife, Carmen Craiglow. She has an incredibly busy schedule, so I really appreciate her making time for me. And uh, everybody at home, please log on to telofilms.com on Sunday, December 13th to check out my new romantic web series, Maybell. Bye.